Everything is being served because we want nothing but fresh beer for this segment. Local brewers, they're using wine barrels, believe it or not, to get their unique flavors into their beers. This is awesome stuff. Joining us once again to talk about some of the best barrel-age brews is my man Brandon Hernandez. Brandon, good morning, sir. Good morning. How stoked are you that we opened those beers for you? This is unbelievable. I can't wait. But I appreciate you as you guide me through exactly what it is that I'm drinking. I saw a beer that was like 13.5%, so I don't even know if that's a beer anymore, but we'll get to that in a sec. Where do you want to start? <laughs> uh, I want to go ahead and start with uh, the first one over there from California Wild Ale. Here we so, what go. we're doing today, uh, in preparation for Valentine's Day, I figured we'd give you some beers that are easy to fall in love with. Okay. Barrel aged beer is really easy to fall in love with. They not only are great beers to start with, but they're aged so that they pick up the character yeah. of barrels, be okay. it wine barrels, spirit barrels. And so we're going to get right into this. this I want to follow Peach your lead. Bellini. Do I sip first? Do I wait for you to describe? I, I'm you sipping. sip while I talk, then I'll come right back to you. How about that? Uh, we got Peach Bellini, which Ooh. is based on a Prosecco cocktail that's fruited and found at a lot of brunches. It's yeah. uh, a golden ale that's aged for an entire year in, uh, wine, in wine barrels, and then it's aged on musket grape pomace and then aged on peaches to make this complex fruity thing with a uh, great uh, nuance yep. of wine grape and must in there um it's the ultimate brunch beer so like you could just have this just as easily on a sunday morning as you would that champagne cocktail how do you explain to people i mean i don't even know how to describe it i mean you described it well but it's kind of it's like is it okay. bitter is it kind of sour it's definitely sour. It's meant to be a sour beer. Wild right. ales and sour ales are supposed to be right, just right, right. that. But then you get all these nuances of My the barrel which, which, that it was put in. So you don't necessarily mm. get wine. You get these uh, these nice uh, different kinds of flavors that come yeah. from the oak, uh, the wine-tinged oak. And we have a Cabernet Franc wild ale as well. And it's, of course, aged on Cabernet Franc grapes, which, which you get kind of more of a winey flavor, but these are just outstanding. They do all sours and wild ales sure. over there in Sorrento Valley. And okay. Beach. I'm going to... I'm going to pace myself. They left me with a bottle opener just in case. Brandon, I think I'm going to pass on that. Let's move. By the way, the <laughs> alcohol on this one was a 4.7. So that's manageable yeah. uh, versus some of these yeah, other ones. Yeah, they're not what? all big. <laughs> yeah, what is up next? Uh, next up, we have Belching Beaver. Here we they go. have this really cool, uh, it, it's another barrel-aged sour, apricots, peaches, and white grapes. Mm, but okay. we're going to switch you over to a darker beer. Oh which is also bigger. It's, called, it's from their Branded and Barrel series. Now, this is a uh, Imperial Stout that spent 18 months in Heaven Hill bourbon whiskey barrels, oh and goodness. it is made with chocolate, banana, peanut butter. I mean, how can that not Wait, be good, what? right? Banana and chocolate. Okay. I and mean, I'll peanut try peanut butter. So, so there we go. Yeah. So while you're trying that, I'm going to prep you. It's going to be like boozy banana bread that's fit for Elvis. Wow. There's like so much stuff going on here. Oh, yeah, yeah. Play, and you get a, me this. A nice I, I don't sweetness. know what's happening. I taste the banana, definitely the chocolate. Yeah. Now, the you, you probably get some yep, butter, yep. in there, and maybe even a little vanilla. A little vanilla comes little from the oak, of vanilla, sure. And so these, these all play well together. But this is kind of like one of the more decadent beers that you could possibly oh, have, sure and is. that it has all those, those nice adjuncts in there. But they make for this dessert experience, oh. basically, <laughs> which really goes well with Valentine's Day, to be honest. I mean, this is something you could have. and We jumped you know, right to it, didn't we? Look at this. 13.8. Yowza, Ooh. Brandon, yowza. You gotta love it. Good morning, Rob. Good, good morning. Uh, this should have been my coffee at <laughs> 6 o'clock. Hold on. Yowza. How many times have I said that today, Brandon? That was something. Uh, okay, uh, we have someone that's in a bag. Is this different? Should I not open this? Oh, that's just like the little bottle. Look at how cool that is. I showed you. So that's their fruited sour. We can shift over to the next brewery, which okay, is Carl Strauss. They have a, a really big milestone coming up for them, and it's their 33rd anniversary. Wow. I mean, San Diego they, they were the Strauss, first post-prohibition brewery. Yeah, you, you kind of do, especially when they make beers like this. I mean, we have a, every year they make an imperial, uh, a, a imperial barrel-aged beer that they release for their anniversary. Mm -hmm. This time around, it's an imperial Baltic porter. Imperial means higher alcohol, so right. it can withstand the aging process. And this was uh, just spent an entire year in tawny wine, uh, tawny port wine barrels. Say that 10 times fast. Mm -hmm. uh, this is actually kind of a redo of a beer that they did. You might remember we came on with their Christmas beer back in December and mm -hmm. they had that 12th, their 12 days of Christmas. This was actually a riff on the first beer they did in that series. Uh, it was called uh, Parrot in a Palm Tree. I'm glad it's back because it's delicious. It tastes like kind of like chocolate covered cherries, chocolate and vanilla in there. But oh, again, yes. none of these things are dominant flavors. They're just yeah. all in there together. So you get this really rich uh, unique flavor that you can't get from anything else. So uh, it, it's 
it's pretty outstanding. Oh yeah, this is this is really good. Uh, it, so exactly how does the wine barrel change the taste of all these beers? So they take used wine barrels from wineries, and of course they have it had been aging wine mm. in there for years, and so that wine seeps into the wood. As uh, temperatures change, the, the oh, wood wow. will uh, expand and contract and trap things in there. You put the, the, the beer in there, mm -hmm. it continues to do that, and it leaches out some of that character into the beer. Good grief, man. I have a question. Um, usually my beer, I like it yeah. cold. Sometimes I put it in a freezer with a chilled glass. When it's like a stout mm -hmm. or when it's like a, one of these barrel aged, do, do we open and let it sit for a second? Or do you still want it kind of cold, chilled, like, like a regular beer, if you will? That is a great question. Mm -hmm. Actually, what you want to do is have this at what they call cellar temp. So what you want to have, it, it's a little under room temperature as far as being cool, but okay. not cold. And that way you can experience all the flavors because the colder a beer gets, the less you can taste all of the, uh, the nuances. Really? Within it. Gotcha. Yeah, that's important mm -hmm. because there's so many different flavors that I noticed it was just opened up a few minutes ago and it really does make a difference. Yeah, so you need to come back after the broadcast and then just really experience <laughs> after, the beer forget again. It. Or when it's a little safer, you know? Forget after the broadcast. It's during the, at the end of the broadcast. It's just as good. Uh, what's up next as I continue with this 33rd anniversary, Carl Strauss? Mm -hmm. Okay, we have another brewery that's celebrating an anniversary. And while it's not 33 years, it's a pretty big one. It's a nine-year anniversary for Rip Current out in San Marcos. Yeah. They also have a North Park tasting room. Cool. They are going to have an event uh, all weekend long. February 25 to 27, where they're going to be releasing all these specialty beers, including beers from what is a really robust uh, uh, barrel aging program. One of them you have there is uh, Rescue Buoy. It's Rescue a barrel aged real stout. It's been in Templeton Rye whiskey barrels. That's delicious. But then they have the special one that I'm actually going to drink with you uh, in this special anniversary glass. Uh, you two could have it. See, this Rescue Buoy, Brandon, event. this Rescue Buoy is yeah. one of the ones that I would say, you know what, let it sit for a few minutes. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah, because you're going to get get just more of, of the uh, the malts that are in there that are making this complex type of a chocolate roasty coffee thing going on. Um, this other beer I have is called Stormbreak. It's okay. been in barrels for three and a half years. I mean, three and a half years. Wow. The storm And break, then they yeah. rested it on vanilla. It's got steady state coffee, which is local in San Marcos, and it's coffee imperial porter. Another big boy, but like really delicious. I mean, when you drink this, I just take a sip, and it's kind of like, man, do you like some beer with your whiskey? Uh, it's just <laughs> like this sour mess type of thing going on in yeah. there, and you just really get all of that character. Yeah, it, it goes on sale online on on Valentine's Day. Perfect. So. These are thirteen perfect, and a half and twelve segment. and a half. You loaded me up today, Brandon Hernan. I tell you what, I'm so glad. My goodness, hold on a sec. They should do a before and after on all these segments. Oh, man. I think. Raul before, Raul after. I feel Raul like doing after. the Olympic wrap-up now after that. <laughs> wow. And you know this what? Is, we didn't spill is, anything. I mean, this is really spectacular. Let's talk about the San Diego Beer News Awards. Those are coming up. All right. People want to vote. How do they vote? They vote by going to San Diego Beer News. Right at the top of the page, you'll see a, a, a banner ad saying, vote all you do is click there go to the ballot we just started the uh the ballot went live yesterday and we already have cool. 1100 oh ballots cast so be be part of that and like vote yeah, for man. your favorite beers and breweries it's very simple and fun brandon uh you're a mad genius i love it this is uh fantastic i appreciate the time uh good luck with the awards all the information fox Thanks, san man. diego .com. Uh, and my goodness you can get to enjoy some of this as well cheers brandon